Miller, who she grew up within cool. eyesight of the Silver Dome right here in Waterford, Kettering, Michigan. We'll get the start at quarterback up front. We mentioned that offensive line, their 15th straight game as a starting unit. Brockemeyer, Tucker, Cruz, Valerio, and Big Cat Williams. The wide receivers, because of an injury to Des White this week, he's out. They go with a three-receiver set. Bates, Booker, and Terrell getting the start. First down from the 26, officially. Jim Miller hands it off to the rookie. Anthony Thomas with a five-yard pickup for the second-round pick out of Michigan. That Lions defensive front, solid unit up front with a mix of veterans and young guys on the end. Scroggins and Porsche. Luther Ellis and the rookie Sean Rogers in the middle. Clint Freewald gets a start at one linebacker. He replaces Barrett Green, who's out with a bad back out of herniated disc. Light and Brian Westbrook, the corners. Campbell and Schultz, the two safeties. Second and five from the 31. Miller, his first pass. Going up top right away, Dwayne Bates makes the catch. Into Lion territory, down to the 41-yard line. That's good enough for a 28-yard play. Conservative offense, right? Second play, play action pass here of the game. Dwayne Bates, who's getting an, an early start here today because of the injury to Des White, right here in an early slot. They take him right down the middle of the field, challenge the safeties of Detroit. And while I was looking at Dwayne Bates before the game, we both were looking at him, how big a body he is. And it fits in with what they do in Chicago, big bodies on little bodies. They, they like that, the size and height difference. That's just his second catch of the season. Right over the middle, quick pass to Marty Booker, and they use those big receivers. This time, Booker picks up eight yards. And just about all these receivers, at least the starters today for Chicago, big guys. Well, it's part of the philosophy of what they believe in here. Marty Booker is about 220 pounds. He's built very solid. You know, Marcus Robinson, who got hurt against Cincinnati this year, was the biggest of all of them. But here's Dwayne Bates. At, he looks to be about 6'4", 215. You know, and then uh, David Terrell, their first-round draft pick, also at 215 pounds. Second and short, Anthony Thomas, a big back. Fights his way through the hole, gets the first down for the Bears. Now, I said at the outset, I was talking about John Shoup, the young offensive coordinator, who I really like a lot. And, you know, to his credit, he's taken rookies like Anthony Thomas and David Terrell. You know, first-year starter like Jim Miller, and he's molded these guys together. Most teams in most places in the league, it's an excuse. Oh, you know, the reason why we're not in the playoffs is because, you know, it's a work in progress. We got young guys. You know, we let those guys grow up. Well, they're not waiting for them to grow up. They're winning as they're growing up. First down from the 28th. Play action. Miller towards the end zone. Dwayne Bates. Touchdown, Chicago Bears. He came into this game with one catch. He's already had two and his first touchdown in the National Football League. Chicago came out and attacked Detroit early in this game. Went right after a secondary that's been weakened by injuries, decimated by injuries all year. Just taking it right here. He's going to take it right to the house here. Last season. Lions take over. First down at the 23. Ty Detmer, his first pass to Corey, Corey Schlesinger out of the backfield. Schlesinger dancing his way out for a pickup of about nine. What is it? So it backs him up to the 22-yard line. It'll be second and 11. Detmer, quick pass out to Johnny Morton. Slips one tackle. And he makes up the loss. Finding his way out to the 38-yard line. A pickup of 16 and a first down. Checking out the Bears' defense. We talked about that front four. Daniels and Robinson on the end. The two big men in the middle. Trailer and Ted Washington. Good young linebacking crew. Of course, everybody knows Brian Urlacher is the middle linebacker, but Holman and Colvin, two good guys on the outside as well. McQuarters and Harris, the safeties, along with Paris and Brown as the two safeties. First down from the 38. Lamont Warren bouncing it outside. Warren with a pickup of five. Let's just take a look at Ty Detmer. You know, he was brought in here on a trade after the season started. And uh, it was really an ugly situation for Charlie Batch. I mean, the, the team really, really wasn't in love with him. They wanted Ty Detmer to come in and run this offense. He'd been with Marty Morningway. 
in Green Bay and San Francisco. And he knew that there was a comfort level with what Ty could do in his offense. And he really, and he came in off an Achilles injury of a year ago. He wasn't really healthy. He didn't have really have a training camp in Cleveland. And he came in and he got thrown in there and he tried to do too much too soon. But he's a very calm guy that understands this offense well. On the reverse, there's Desmond Howard. Got a block. Couldn't get it outside. R.W. McQuarters tripped him up. But Howard fell across the first down marker. And what Detroit is doing is the same thing they did in the first game. They want to wear out the, the two twin Buddhas in the middle. Both Keith Trailer and Ted Washington, who Pam Oliver had a nice session with in a pregame show. But those guys right now are having to run side to side on that reverse, on the quick out, you know, on the first play of the game to Corey Schlesinger. Watch these guys. They're forced to run now. That's sort of out of their element. Ted Washington running a long ways here in pursuit. And they want to get them out of the game. And when they get out of the game, then they'll attack the middle of the line. Ted Washington said, don't just call them run stoppers, though. So he's got to show some athletic ability. Game breakers is what they call themselves. Now Lamont Warren. Luckily, his neck wasn't broken after the hit by Alfonso Boone. You see Alfonso Boone in there right now in replacement of Keith Trailer. So they've already begun to replace those guys. Now here's Ted Washington here now. So you don't really block Ted. I mean, he just jumped over the offensive guard and you know he's there he's there at the end of the play he does they those guys do have the agility much more than people think just looking at their bodies three yards on the play and the Lions kind of have something going here as they get the ball into Chicago territory on this opening drive See no running back here in the backfield spreading him out go with four wide receivers Desmond Howard one of them in motion Denver gonna throw that low incomplete RW McCord is the nearest guy there I guess Johnny Morton was probably the guy he intended that for, but Morton covered well, as was everyone else. Well, they want to move Ty Detmer. That's part of the offense. They did that with Mike McMahon and Charlie Batch, just moving the pocket, making the Bears so that difficult for them to know where, you know, the quarterback is going to be. Making those guys run and making them chase. The area of the field that's open in this defense is the middle of the field because they play the safety so deep. And they're deep here on this play. I mean, in fact, you can barely see them in the screen. This area of the field is what's going to be open on this third down. Well, the Lions have to get it to their 41 to keep the drive going. Go, 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 go. Detmer under pressure. Gets rid of it and throws it out of bounds so the drive will end. <laughs> Feeling the heat from Roosevelt. Chip. Play action. Miller feeling the heat. Gets rid of it incomplete. Take a look at the touchdown in the series before for Chicago. Watch what they get here in coverage. You see the safety walk up here. When he walks up, Dwayne Bates knows he's got one-on-one -on, -one on the outside here with Chidi Awoma. It's a very difficult pass to cover. It's a skinny post. All they got to do is throw it inside. I mean, just throw that ball to a spot and let the receiver go get it. And Dwayne Bates had to go low to get it, which is a good safe spot away from the safety. Good design on offense there by the Bears. After the incompletion, second and ten. Anthony Thomas. Gonna be a short pickup, maybe a yard. Sean Rogers. That's number two pick against number two pick. Both those guys having an excellent rookie season. Well, you know, Sean Rogers is a big guy that has, you know, he's got a seven size 17 triple E foot. But he plays with like small feet. He's very light on his feet. Very uh, you know, real likable guy how can you play with small feet if you got 17 I'm just saying he's light on his feet Kurt I mean he does he dances he's very athletic light and on his toes and a very difficult guy to block and if you're in this division you know who the defensive tackles are Sapp and Rogers and Luther Ellis you know and Chris Hovan in Minnesota it's tough in the pits in this division Bears need the 30 for the first Miller going for that wow. and caught Marty Booker goes up and brings it down and Marty wanted that football. I talked to him before the game. He wants 100 catches this year. He started the day with 85. And watch him go up to get this ball. This is part of being big and physical now. He gets inside Michael Westbrook. Now here he is. Two hands on the ball. While he was being dragged down by Westbrook. I mean, that's strength there. Because he's lifting up Westbrook to go get that football. And he probably has the biggest hands. In fact, look at his gloves. His gloves, they don't even wrap at the top because his hands are so big. 12 yards on the play. Bears at the 34. 
Got it going up top for Marty Booker again. He makes the catch. Finally brought down by Lamar Campbell. But only after he's deep into Lions territory at the 22, good for a gain of 44. Well, they know that Bryant Westbrook out there isn't healthy. He's still coming back from an Achilles injury. And they were going to go after him today. They set him up with a little stop before, and now they're just going to run Marty Booker right by him. No moves, no hesitation. That's a well-thrown pass by Jim Miller because he threw it over his outside shoulder away from the defender. Great concentration by Booker. When you get involved in the offense the way these Bears receivers are. First down at the 22. Miller on the play action. That's the Damon Shelton who can't haul it in. Let's check in with JV for an update. Hey, Kurt, although Atlanta is all but mathematically eliminated, they're still playing hard. Take a look at Jay Fielder's pass tipped by Keith Brooking, picked off by Ray Buchanan. Buchanan returns it to the Miami 29 on the subsequent series. Maury Smith takes it in from two yards, and it's the Falcons on top by seven. Back to Kurt and Bryant. Well, Atlanta is still fighting to stay in the playoff hunt. Miami just trying to straighten things out. They started off well, but really have crashed the last month or so. And it's their December swoon in Miami. Anthony Thomas can't quite get through the hole picks up about three yards on the play Robert Porsche brings him down you know one of the young guys that has fit in well here is Anthony Thomas and he didn't play in the first line game a month ago he had a hamstring problem just a couple of games there in the middle of the season but he's going to get a thousand yards this year and he's been a big lift I mean you know a second round pick out of Michigan played just down the road in Ann Arbor and uh, what a find he's been because he's a guy that can deliver the home run punch. He's a guy that can take it to the house on any single carry. He's proved that this year. A couple of huge games this year, just most recently against Tampa a couple weeks ago. Well, you see he's 49 yards away from 1,000 despite missing two games with an injury. A bunch formation here. Bears got to get it to the 12. Miller going towards the end zone. Open touchdown, David Terrell. There's another Michigan <laughs> guy scoring. <laughs> Terrell, the first round pick out of Michigan, gets the 20 yard touchdown score, his third as a rookie. Yeah, here's Terrell on the outside now. They're going to run across the middle and down, and then Terrell's going to take it deep. Marty Booker coming behind him. Little stutter, now the post here working this in the pregame. And he dropped this pass a month ago at Soldier Field, climbed the goalpost out of frustration. This one he made sure got the foot's net. I have to apologize to my family for saying, Dam on national television. Well, I think that show could wake up that guy we we're just looking at in the stands. Johnny Morton. Well, he gets a wake up call. Three yard reception, his second of the day. Picks up four yards. Well, you know, the Lions had really struggled for the first time all year last week in Pittsburgh, where it just really collapsed. And what happened is, you know, for so long, their only carrot in what was dangling in front of the Detroit Lions was getting a win. I mean, they put everything into it, and they got the win in Minnesota. And now, you know, the concern is, do they let down after they got that win? And they did in the second half against Pittsburgh, and they've gotten off to a slow start here. They're coming out down 14-0 after two possessions doesn't help. Lamont Warren. Warren dragged down by Brian Robinson. Pick up of maybe a yard on the play. Well, really, this this offense without James Stewart and it's just not a very good run offense, and they they really miss James Stewart. We were hobbled by an ankle injury almost all season, and now uh, on the shelf probably for the rest of the season. So they're going to a, a couple of guys, Lamont Warren. We'll see Avion Kaysen back there. But really, this ball is going to be in the hands of Ty Detmer today. There it is, with Stewart, almost 100 yards a game, and without him, less than three yards per carry. They need to pick up five, get it to the Bear 49 for the first down. Chicago coming on the blitz. Detmer escapes and runs with it, gets the first down. But Ty Detmer not necessarily known for his running ability, but looking like the injured Mike McMahon there. Simply, and instead of having the ball at the 38 of Chicago, they've got it at their own 45. Larry Foster again, brought down by Brian Erlacher. You know, Ty Detmer doesn't have a strong arm, but he's an accurate guy and he can read a defense, and that's why he's here, as well as to be a mentor for Mike McMahon. I mean, that's one of the reasons why they wanted to get him here and why they give up draft picks to get him. And there's uh, Mike McMahon, who I thought in his three starts really looked good. I mean, below a 50% completion passer, but big plays, 
very good athletically and also good instincts with the football in the pocket and when to get out. In street clothes today is Detmer as it's second and ten from the 45. Bears showing the blitz and come again. Detmer quickly gets rid of it to Corey Schlesinger. Roosevelt Colvin stiffed that out for a pickup of four. And only 22 years old still has to develop. More hit yardage takes away a 16 yard play. It's now third and 15. And there's Detmer rolling out, gets it downfield, incomplete. Pass intended for Bernie Manuel, but he couldn't catch it and tiptoe the line. After holding out in training camp and missing the preseason with an injury. But apparently, he's not out of school here in the holiday break. Leon Johnson with the catch. Gonna be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Lions in this league that you can turn it around in one year. The pitch to Anthony Thomas. Robert Porsche with a big play in the backfield. Drops him for a loss of six. And there's a veteran who's having a fine season for the Lions. Well, he is. And you know what? He reads this down block here really well. They're gonna come down and they're gonna crack him. And he penetrates it. Marty Booker missed it. A penetration will kill that play. But the Bears like to run in that situation here because it's safe. You know, it's, it's a play that doesn't get turned over much, and they've had a lot of success with it with those down blocks of those wide receivers. Bears with a big third and 17. They need to get it to the 21 for the first. And here's Porsche at this side this time. They just hand it off instead. James Allen. Darting his way out to the 16-yard line, going to be five yards short of the first. His own eclipse. Lions begin at the 44 Chicago. Mark Warren on the handoff, stopped in the backfield by Roosevelt Colvin. Let's send it back to Los Angeles and JB for another game break. Hey, Kurt, you know Tampa Bay is cheering on Atlanta for a loss in this one. That's because they would be in. So what does Chris Taylor do? He throws a pick to Brock Marion. He walks it in from 26 yards. And it's all tied at seven in the second. Back to Curse and Bryant. That's our old beach babe, JB. <laughs> now some bad quarterback play on both sides. Interception with Chandler and Feeding. Warren lost four yards on that last play. Second and 14. Off the play action. Dead. Going to be brought down for the sack. First one of the day. Brian Robinson will be the guy to do it. Well, there's uh, there's those game breakers in the middle there. Ted Washington and Key Trailer both getting pressure up the middle. And Warren was way on the outside. They still benefit from the penalty. It's third and 15. And Colvin almost got a sack. Detmer got rid of it just in time. And Colvin said, give it to me. You cost me last time. Give me a break. Well, they, <laughs> they had Corey Schlesinger over there as a pickup blocker on Colby that time. He's just giving out some end of the year love to him. Uh, <laughs> that wasn't no love. Uh -uh. He ain't playing that game. Backs him up 10 yards, first and 20. Quick pass, incomplete. Intended for Ahmad Merritt. You know, some Sundays, this bare offense, it looks boring. And, you know, they don't really look like the attack, but they've got hidden strengths in this offense because it plays into a good defense and good special teams. It's a whole package. And what they do, look, they've given up the fewest sacks. Second, the fewest penalties. They're, what they've done with the punting game is amazing here. Always putting that thing down so it gives a big field position for the other team to go. And they take care of the football. They don't lose it to fumbles very much. Less than one every uh, two games. And suddenly winning is not enough. Which is surprising for a team that won only five games last year. That is. Incomplete. Luther Ellis got a pause. Teams would sell nearly 80,000 tickets at 1 and 13. It's an advantage. Big third down for the Bears. They're going for it. Intended for Ahmad Merritt. Almost picked off by Chidi Awama. Lions with good field position once again, beginning at the Chicago 46. Corey Schlesinger. Can't change direction. Brian Erlacher with the stop right at the line of scrimmage. And you know what's amazing to me, Baldy, is when you take a look at this NFC playoff picture, of course, the top six teams all make the playoffs. And right now, St. Louis, Chicago, and Philadelphia, the division leaders. And we talked about how the Bears can clinch if they win and the yep. Packers lose. But either the Bears, Rams, 49ers, or Packers could win 12 games and be a fifth seed this yeah. year. And go on the road and play the divisional uh, playoff, a wild card game. And it's been a, a decade since the Lions were in that situation. 
Detmer on second down. Feeling the heat from Ted Washington. Gets rid of it and almost throws an interception. He overthrew Johnny Morton. R.W. McCord is right behind him. Well, Pam Oliver asked Ted, you know, are, are you more than just a run stuffer? He goes, yeah, I'm an athlete. I'm a game breaker. And again, pressure up the middle this time from Big Ted. Here working on Dominic Rayola. Just swum him. I mean, there's the athletic ability of, of getting around him. Now, the change of direction isn't all quite there. That's that, a different gear. No, that's, you know, that's Newton's physics and stuff. You know, you get that much weight going that fast one direction, it's hard to get it going in another direction. Lions have to get it to the 36 for the first. Detmer. Under pressure, gets rid of it again, incomplete. And this time, Alfonso Boone was hanging on it. Tonight with that line. Starts at the 17. That's Anthony Thomas. Out to Los Angeles and again, JB for the game break. And Kurt Dallas answers San Francisco's touchdown drive, driving nine plays for 80 yards. Princey Carter hooking up with Darren Trevorini. It is now 10-7 Dallas. And Kurt, I didn't know that Terry Bradshaw and Brian Baldinger did a commercial together years ago. Back to Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> Years ago in Dallas, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Motor oil. Did you sell any? No, I didn't sell any. That company's still in I, business? I got the I got the heck beat out of me that day chasing Terry Bradshaw. Typical quarterback, pretty boy, protected. Three yard pickup on the last play, second and seven. Over the middle of the field, that's to the tight end. Fred Baxter. Going to pick up about five yards. Yeah, that's something that Jim Miller hasn't had happen to him. I mean, he hasn't really been laid out much this year been sacked he's only been sacked nine times all year you know and I think that's part of the bond he has with this offensive line you know and everywhere they go he kind of follows well, they Talking, go out to dinner together what every week every Thursday night yeah you know, he sits there with the meetings with them they always meet for a couple hours on their own on Wednesdays and Thursdays and they just review protections and possibilities of what could happen in situations and they, they feel you know good communication up front with that group third and two off the play action. Miller to the air. Baxter can't bring this one in, but he gets a penalty marker. More than one a game. This is a run and a pass formation for the Bears. This time they, they run a, a counter the other direction away from him. Anthony Thomas picks up six yards on him. And I'm looking down in the pits there to the right guard, Chris Valario. He, he's been starting for five years next to Big Cat Williams. See there is number 58. Got the, the build of an offensive lineman. <laughs> You know, and these guys, he, he said that they know each other so well that they don't have to talk up front. They can just look at each other and they know. They know which guy to block, where to go. You know, you just see them you know, walking out of the huddle. They, they got the signal, though. They know what they're doing at that point. And that's invaluable as a lineman. All kinds of shifting going on for the Bears now on second and four. They take the punch to the other side this time. And, they... and Anthony Thomas follows it. Gets the first down. Steps out of bounds after a pickup of seven. Well, that play right there is, is a toss crack, and the Bears run it very, very well. And what they do is they get to the outside quickly with the toss, but they get good angle blocks down on the defensive linemen and the linebackers. If you're a defender, anything with the word crack in it doesn't sound good to me. It's, it sounds painful. First down at the 48. Miller up top. There's Dwayne Bates again into the open field all the way down to the 12 yard line. To number 87, Dwayne Bates. Dwayne Bates, who was inactive for five games this year. I think a lot of people in Chicago are going to wonder where the heck has been this guy been all year? A new deep threat right here on the outside. I mean, he's just going to take it straight down to the post. Nobody from Detroit picks him up. The safeties were all sitting on the outside. They would seem surprised by the whole thing. And Miller, perfect touch down the middle of the field. Nobody should be that wide open in the middle of the field in this league. Well, that's 40 yards on the pass play. First down at the 12, Anthony Thomas. He's gonna be hit after a two yard pickup by Chris Claiborne. Second and eight at the 10. Here's, here's Dwayne Bates, the target that Gotten involved uh, all day so far. Marty Booker coming out of the backfield. 
Got Hiller looks left. Bates drops it. Well, he went right back to Bates, and for the first time this afternoon, he couldn't put it. There's that front formation to the right you talked about. Towards the end zone, too low, incomplete. Dwayne Bates, the intended receiver again. First down at the 23. Zerlacher on the outside. He's going to come to blitz. And he does. Detmer gets rid of it. Johnny Morton with the catch. Morton going to be out near the first down marker before Warren Holman makes the tackle. And Detroit's going to go to a hurry-up offense here, just trying to generate some excitement and, and try to generate you know, a little bit of tempo in the offense. Comes the blitz again, and Detmer gets rid of it again. Corey Schlesinger out across the 40. And those are the type of passes I thought that we'd see from Detmer early in this game. The short passes, the check downs, that, you know, hit them where they aren't. And this is a good move from Detroit here, just to get some, generate some excitement in the stadium and, and within the offense. Detmer looks like he's changing the play of the line. Plenty of time on the play for Johnny Morton, first down, Lions. Our double quarters with the tackle, but he's into Bear territory. Down to the 48-yard line. Pick up the, of 10. All those people in the stands, they just saw him all in unison. Like it, it was like watching David Letterman. They all went to clap together. <laughs> Some of the boss sign up. <laughs> Denver. All of a sudden, this Lion offense into a rhythm. Schlesinger dropped the football, though. Made the catch. They say he was down. Yeah, no signal. Watch your left. Watch your left. Bears take over first down at the 44. I'm sure Morning Wake staff saw that replay. Do they lose it? Miller, all kinds of time. Incomplete, though. Thrown too low for David Terrell. Yeah, Jim Miller that time was looking deep again to Ahmad Merritt. Filling in for the injury to Des White today, and he was well covered. We went to his check down. Look at the Bears over 200 yards already today. 185 through the air. Working with the wide receiver coach there, Todd Haley. Young player, Ahmad Merritt, played over NFL Europe this year with the world champion Berlin Thunder. Played his college ball at the University of Wisconsin. Doesn't mind being indoors today when it's about 10 below outside. They grew up in Chicago as a Bear fan. Miller escaping. Oh, Wide open, Marty Booker. But he can't stay inbounds. And this is a very unselfish team. People not worried about who's getting the credit on this team. Tracy Scroggins comes in to replace Hall. First down from the 39. Anthony Thomas can't escape. That was Tracy Scroggins on the tackle. Just trying to get that toss crack going again. Just getting Blake Brockemeyer outside into space. You're going to see it. What they do is you angle block down right here. You get the squares against the, the circles here. And then you get your tackle out here on this corner. And you get a mismatch out here on the edge. And this is what the Bears do on the last play. Probably run it as many times. And here you, you see Tucker coming out here. You see Brockemeyer here. You get the big lineman out front, and then you get a guy like Marty Booker, who's as good a blocker of wide receiver as there is out there on the edge. I told you, anytime there's any word crack used against the defense, it sounds painful. That diagram, it looks painful. Well, the Lions have done a good job of defending it so far today. Play action by Miller, brought down for the sack. Robert Porsche. Team go a long field. We talked about Sean Rogers' big feet. McMillan needs smaller. <laughs> Lions begin at the 20. Flare pass out to Lamont Warren. Going to get nothing. Lions with all three of their timeouts. 136 to go on the clock. Yeah, I mean, the one dangerous guy they have out there to me right now is, is Johnny Morton, who's just, to me, the ultimate pro. Just watching him in practice. I mean, you know, it, it's all about the game and taking care of his business. And he really hasn't been involved here today. Of course, the protection up front. Hasn't really allowed Ty Detmer much time to get the ball down the field. Detmer gets rid of it. That's Bert Emanuel. Emanuel forced out of bounds. Going to take an official with it. Yeah. 
He took got a big shot by R.W. McQuarters. Yeah. The line judge goes right down with him. Yeah. Mark Stecken Kirchner. Stecken Kirchner. Work on that, Kurt. Stecken Kirchner. Yeah. <laughs> took the blow right in the midsection. I think he's been doing his ab work, though. Because it didn't it didn't knock the wind out of him and he gets back up on it. Third and two. Incomplete. Lamont Warren, the intended receiver. And it's not, you know, oh Susanna either. <laughs> you know, it's like Chopin and Tchaikovsky. First down from the 34. Detmer puts everything into that one and completes it. Bernie Manuel into Bear Terry. He just turf quite a couple of guys in that. Well, especially if you've already got a bad name. Detmer gets rid of it for Johnny Morton. Overthrown and incomplete. That's great coverage there that time by Chicago just running their cover too. Tony Powers came over the top from the safety to give help to R.W. McQuarters. You can see the safety okay, help Tony, that the okay. Bears have. I mean, they play their safeties very deep for this reason. Watch this coming over to help out here. Ty Detmer hung that ball up long enough where Parrish almost got himself an interception. And that's how they like to do it. They like to squeeze it with the safety in the corner to take away that dead spot of the field. Lions deep at 37 for the first down. Bears on the blitz. Picked up. From behind, Detmer sack and loses the football. Philip Daniels was the guy coming around from the right end. Relentless pursuit from Philip Daniels that time. Detroit recovered. Well, Chicago came after Ty Detmer with the blitz, and it gets picked up here. Both guys, Mike Brown and Warwick Holdman, come in. And there's Philip Daniels. He's working on Lamont, Lamont Warren there. That ball squirted out. Matt Joyce fell on top of him. I tell you, when the defensive end turns the corner and there's a running back there to block him, they, they, they start thinking sack. Back then. First down from the 27. Avion Kaysan in the game for the first time. Gets his first carry. Knocked out of bounds by Brian Erlacher and Kaysan was with the Rams at the start of this year. Released and now get a chance for the Lions. Well, watch Erlacher in the middle here. I mean, you toss the ball, he's going to run. I mean, it's right now. He's going to outrun Warwick Holman to get to this football. Holman gets cut and Erlacher gets the hit. On second down, Corey Schlesinger out of the backfield. There's the other guy. Yeah. Hey, Erlacher makes a tackle, so Warwick <laughs> Holman has to make one to keep pace. Well, Erlacher beat him to the last tackle, so Holman's got to go and get his. And the interesting thing about all three of these linebackers is they stay on the field the whole time. Holman, Colvin, and Erlacher. And none of them really played linebacker in college. Yeah. Holman and Colvin were really defensive ends. You know, Erlacher was a safety. They're all early in their careers here learning new positions. Erlacher is learning all the time. Ryan's on third and one. Detmer has the time. Dropped by Emmanuel, incomplete. Three of a couple years ago, and so he's still struggling to, to find his rhythm. A quick screen pass out to Marty Booker. Gets a block from Dwayne Bates. Bates lost his shoe during the block, but it was good enough for a nice pickup of nine yards. Well, that's what all those receivers are, are good blockers. When the other guy's catching the ball, the other one has to be a good blocker. Marty Booker hobbling as he gets up. You know, so many of their passes are, are under five yards. I mean, over 100 pass completions this year. Under five yards. But look at his block on the outside by, by Bates. Takes Lost himself out of his shoe. Yeah. Now, does that count as a decleater if you take yourself out of your shoe? <laughs> Half a decleater because you got one shoe. One shoe's on. Second and one. Anthony Thomas. Gets the first down, a pickup of three on the play. So many of the pass completions for Chicago this year have just been horizontal. Just hitches and bubble screens, and just get the ball into these wide receivers. Here, more completions of five yards less than any team in the league this year. And that, that frustrates a lot of people. But what it does is it gives Miller a completion. It gets the ball in the wide receiver's hands. It gives those big other receivers a chance to block on smaller defensive backs. And you never know when you're going to crease one and take one to the house. Set. First down at the 34. Anthony Thomas spins his way. It's going to be a nice pickup of six yards on the play. 
from being bottled up initially. Well, That's you, the kind of play that John Shoup wants to see out of this team. Well, look at the yellow pen sticking out of John Shoup's ear. Halftime adjustment? Well, in the first half, it was an orange pen. And I said that he's a guy that uses different color pens. You know, here he was in the first half. It, it, you know, it was an orange color pen hanging out of there. That's Not the even a cap half. on it. Right. <laughs> Just ready to write. So you go in at halftime, you discuss things, you come back out. Yeah. You say, I need a different color pen in my ear. You come out with a yellow. By the way, he did blink there. It only Which is a rarity. Yeah. That's why we got it on tape. Second and five. That ball dipped at the line of scrimmage. Incomplete. Well, you know, he said, look, I understand the people's frustration in Chicago about our offense some days. He goes, but it works. He goes, look, I grew up in Pittsburgh. I was frustrated with Chuck Noll. In fact, I called radio stations to tell them, tell them that I thought Chuck Noll stinks. And he should be, you know, so he understands being a fan and what that's all about. But he also said that, look, with the talent we have, what we do is, is, is the best formula for our success. And the fact is, is that they're 13 and four with that man calling the plays. Well, he needs to get him to the 44 to keep this drive going. Quick pass, another under five yard. I don't think Marty Booker got enough for the first down. They needed five, he got four. But he, he takes up two spaces. As big as two normal guys. On first down, Corey Schlesinger tries to bounce it outside. Pick up a four yards on the play. Yeah, go down there and take a look at the, the heart and soul here. Brian Erlacher in the middle. You know, a guy that you know, keeps the plays on his wrist. He's just looked down his wristband. Greg Blash, the defensive coordinator, just called out number one through 30. One of the different 30 defenses. And he reads down to number 30, and then he reads what that defense is to his team. Been calling the signals since day one here. Well, they say it's a different wristband from first half to second, so no one can figure out their signals. Play action by Detmer. David Sloan, the tight end. Good enough for the first down. Out to the 32-yard line, a gain of 10. Yeah, you know what? And if you just plug the tape in, you sit down in the easy chair on Sunday, just watch 54, because he's going to end up at the football. Here he is in coverage. He hunts up Johnny Morton. Watch me. You're going to see 87 coming into his picture. He sees him. Reads past. Now he's hunting him up. He hunts up Morton. Now he's going to go find a football. And he's going go, go to go get a hit on him. Boom. Leaves the feet right there. And I think the next stage of the development for Brian is to become a real avid film study. And, you know, he doesn't have any veteran Rebel, linebackers Rebel, around him that can teach him how to study film and what to look for. They got young guys on both sides of the ball. Is that incompletion? Intended for Bertie Manuel, broken up by Walt Harris. And there you see Erlacher. And try something a little different here. Uh, we'll put him in a little box yeah. over here. Let's take a look and see. I don't think that you can actually keep Brian in a box, but we're going <laughs> <we're gonna> to try. <laughs> well, no offense has been able to do it yet. Yeah. We're going to make our cameraman work here to try and keep him in that box. Of course, well, you got to get Ted Washington yeah. out of the way. Get out of there, Ted. <laughs> You'll never see him around but he Washington. Said, but that's, that's really what a defense is looking at. They're looking at Ted, and they can't see him. He's hidden behind him. Second and ten. There you see Erlacher playing the run. Of course, that's the play he doesn't make a tackle. But that's okay. They'll take it. Tony Perez stopped Avion Casey. Uh, he just went in there and just stuffed a, you know, a couple of offensive linemen coming up to him, forcing it inside. But I, like I was saying about the film study, is I think that you know once he he's relied so much on his ability and natural talent so far to get to the stage, which has been outstanding. But if he wants to get to that next level where Singletary was, Singletary was a film study guy, and he knew every tendency of every team gave him a bigger advantage. Lions have to get it to the 42 for first. On the play action, Schlesinger out of the backfield incomplete. That'll get you talking to. First down from the 23 for the Bears. Anthony Thomas caught in the backfield. Nice open field tackle made by Brian Williams. We send it out to Los Angeles and James Brown. Hey, Kurt, take a look at what Dallas is doing. The quarterback that Chris Collinsworth doesn't like, Quincy Carter, hauls it nicely. The receiver, Terry Bradshaw, doesn't like. Joey Galloway hauls it in. Take a look at what Dallas is doing to San Francisco, 24-14. Kurt and Brian, I'm glad Terry is laughing. Dallas is right now as well. Back to you guys. Man, Brian, I hope those guys don't like us because guys they don't like have success, apparently. Well, you know what? This is a game of speed and youth, and they just saw it there with Galloway and Quincy Carter. Anthony Thomas fights his way out to the 24, pick up a four. And Thomas came in through the day, meeting just 53 yards for a 1,000-yard season. And we mentioned he missed two games with a bad hamstring, so 
that would be an impressive feat in this would be what his 13th game of the year well it was a good draft for Chicago I mean, they got great effort this year in plays out of David Terrell and Anthony Thomas and if you're looking at the Detroit Lions and what they got to do next year when they go into the draft if they could get themselves a back with speed and power like Thomas and a man with size and, and speed like Terrell they'd be very happy you know as part of the future on third down they need the 33 Wow. Up high, Wayne Bates went up and pulled it down. First down, Chicago. And that's why this is a big man's game. Wayne Bates with the big body over Chidi Owamo here. This wasn't a great throw, but it was a great reach by Dwayne Bates. And that's what you want from your receivers. Let them go make the plays. Great concentration, bringing that ball on and bringing that ball in and hanging on. Dwayne Bates had one catch for yes. three yards on the season before today. But this was the first real opportunity that he's had here today. And that's what you want from all young players. When they give the opportunity, go out and make the best of it. First down at the 36. Quick screen out to Booker. Well, he had that block again, but he couldn't get outside. Todd Light forced him out of bounds. You know, and then we've seen this play before. Watch Dwayne Bates now. He's not catching the ball this time. Now he has to be a team player. Watch him here on the outside throwing some blocks for Booker because this is Booker's man. He's got to beat Todd Light. If he beats Todd Light, then Bates has a block, and then you're you're going vertical and you're picking up some big yard. That put Booker within one catch of the Chicago Bears all-time receiving record. Came in needing eight to tie Johnny Morris's 1964 mark of 93. Thomas on second and seven. Lowers his head, picks up two yards on the play. You know, Anthony Thomas hasn't had a big day running so far today, but this, watching this Bears team over the course of the year now, they wear down opponents on the outside. They make them run, chase down those screens, chase down, uh, you know, the, the bubble screens that they run. And then they, in the fourth quarter, once they get control of the game, that's when they really like to run it. And that's when Anthony Thomas picks up big chunk yardage. Well, he's had two big games this year, one of 173 against Tampa Bay and 188 against Cincinnati. Bears need the 46 to keep this drive alive. Through the hands of Ahmad Merritt, incomplete. And Merritt getting his first NFL action has had three balls come his way today, but dropped her in the crowd. There are quite a few of them today. Detroit taking over at the 11-yard line. Detmer. That pass completed to Corey Schlesinger. Schlesinger fights his way for a pickup of 13. Walt Harris and Warren Holman on the tackle. Yeah, no, it's just... Lions again probably thought they might try to hurry this thing up here and add a little tempo to the offense. They are. They're going to line up right over the football. No huddle. They tried this earlier and they had a little bit of success. They just haven't been able to sustain any drives here today. Detmer brings it back down and just slings it out to the tight end, David Sloan. Sloan stopped right at the 30-yard line. Give him six. Yeah, I'm looking down there at Johnny Morton, who was open in the middle of the field, but because Ty Detmer felt pressure, he couldn't get the ball to him. Johnny Morton has caught passes from 10 different quarterbacks in his eight-year career here. He's been the one constant this season. And he said that he could close his eyes, and he could tell you who threw the ball to. Lamont Warren, eyes wide open on that run. Yeah. Ten right. yards. Yeah, Morton had the block on the outside, allowing it to come. Johnny Morton, just a, a great blocker down the field. For not a big guy, very physical player. Here he is. I mean, he, he's looking to get position here on the outside from R.W. McQuarters, and he does just enough. Talked about his consistency. Started every game this year. The opposite receiver. They've had five different players start there for Detroit. But you know what, though, Kirk? The thing is that as long as I've been watching the Lions, I've always believed that they never really had a quarterback that they believed in. They had guys they drafted. They had guys that had good years, but nobody that they thought could be like a Brett Favre, a Steve Young, that could be there for a duration. And that's what this team needs. And I think McMahon showed enough already this season that you could build with his energy and his excitement and his athletic ability. Three yards on the last play, second and seven. Detmer to the air. There's your guy, Johnny Morton, into Bear territory, down to the 36-yard line. No, of 20. And Johnny is into a lot of activities. Lives out in California, you know, involved in all kinds of different activities. But when he comes here to Detroit during the season, it's all football. You watch him in practice, 
He's getting extra stretching in on Friday. It's all business. His chin strap is buckled. I mean, he is a consummate pro up here at the top. First down at the 36. Detmer feeling the heat. Got rid of it, falls incomplete. Yeah, you know, part of that activity, what? Kurt, is, you know, he's going on Jay Leno live this week. Well, you know, he had a little comment for Jay Leno yeah, when they won the game against Minnesota. Yeah, Leno me. had been making jokes about him every night and uh, told me he could kiss his donkey. I think so. <laughs> well, we did do the best damn sports show promo, well, can we? No, no. Uh, no I don't no. know. I'm not quite sure. No, nah, but you know what? They he had some good because they were just frustrated here. You know, I mean, Jay Leno was having a good time making fun of the Lions, and, and that's nauseating to a guy that has had 4,000 yard receiving uh, years here in Detroit. Second and ten. Off the play out. Denver to Donnie Morton again, and that was a nice grab by Morton. Picks up 16 on the play. And if I was Jay Leno, these are the plays I would be, I would be, you know, instead of like redoing a movie, I'd be rolling in these highlights here of Johnny working one on one. Good solid move here, little separation. And what Johnny needs is he needs some help. You know, Jermaine Crowell and Herman Moore were injured this year. They need to find themselves a big complimentary receiver to Morton. And a consistent quarterback. This will be the fourth straight year they've started a different quarterback at okay, the beginning of the year and the end. They're rolling their coverage over there right now to Johnny Moore. Detmer looking that way. Goes up top for Morton in the end zone, incomplete. He was double covered by Mike Brown and R.W. McWhorters. And then, here's what I mean by rolling the coverage. I mean, Johnny's been hurting him. So the Bears aren't going to let you keep hurting. They're going to take away. So watch Mike Brown. He's the guy that's playing over here in the middle, and he's going to get up over here and end up helping out. See, he knows just how long that ball has to be in the air. Morton running a solid post corner here. That's, that's just good blanket coverage by the Bears. On second down. Oh, my Warren, and he's going to throw. Towards the end zone. Intercepted. Pass intended for Bernie Manuel, but there's Mike Brown. The guy that seems to be everywhere, and it's the same coverage that we just showed the play before, and what the Bears do as well as any team in football. Mike Brown's fifth interception of the year. Picks off the option pass and keeps the score at 17 0. Blanket covered. RW reporters at the bottom of it. Along with Mike Brown at the top. Mike Brown's going to be coming over here. Same coverage we saw before. 4 2. That's uh, actually Walt Harris down at the bottom. But look at this. They sit on this play right from the beginning. Easy play for Mike Brown. The guy that has really hurt the Lions this year. He was the one that knocked out Charlie Batch in the first game a month ago. Well, we talked about the Lions looking for a consistent quarterback. We know one thing, Lamont Warren's not him. <laughs> Bears take over at the 20-yard line. Miller. Fred Baxter. Nice open field tackle by Brian Williams. Stops before pickup of four. Just looking in the middle of that Detroit line, defensive line, looking at Sean Rogers, their second round pick out of Texas this year. He's had a very good season. Leads all rookie defensive linemen in the league in tackles. And you can see the helmet's been beat up. But it's a big man that moves fast. You know, and he's his name is Big Baby. Well, I was yeah, he's just a big guy's a big kid. Yeah. And he hangs out with all big people. I mean, if he walks into a Denny's and they're ordering a big slam breakfast, they, they're creating a stir. He hangs out with Stocker McDougal, who's 350 pounds, and, you know, and Leonard Davis down in Arizona now is 380 pounds. And they all kind of pal around together, but he's not the bully in the group. He's the nice guy. He's the guy that likes to sit down and watch cartoons. In fact, I don't even know some of the cartoons that, that he watches. I, I know the Smurfs and I know the Snorkels, but Dragon Ball Z, I have no idea what that is. I don't know is. what that one is. But he said he's upset because he can't follow the storyline. And he's kind of losing track. His practice is getting in the way. Yeah, <laughs> you can tell he's a big baby. Yeah. Of course, we call him that while we're way up here in the booth, not on the field. Third and three. Miller under pressure from Porsche. Escapes it. And gets rid of the football. Thrown too high. Incomplete. No question how fast he can run. 
Backs him up to second and 20. Detmer out to Warren. Lamont Warren. A nice pickup of 16 yards on the plate. Brian Erlacher in on the tackle. Yeah, take, take a look at him right here. He drops into coverage, gets deep in his coverage, and then once he sees where the ball goes, it's it's a mad break. In the middle here, I mean, he's going to get to the football now. Third down, they need the 35. They get it. Desmond Howard, his first catch of the game. Out to the 45-yard line. Got it. Remember the old commercial, I want to be like Mike. I want to be like Brian. Doesn't no, it doesn't. But you know, I'll work on it. I think you just said it because your name's Brian, though. Uh, <laughs> I'm hoping that some people believe that. David Sloan. Brian Erlach with the tackle. And this defense really built around Erlacher. Yeah. I mean, they saw his talent last year. Went out and got Ted Washington, the key trailer, to protect him better. And it's exactly the way Baltimore did it with Ray Lewis. That was their plan, and it's worked beautifully this year. Seven yards on the last play. Detmer. Right in the middle of the field. There's Sloan again. Good enough for the first down. Brought down at the 33 by Roosevelt Colvin. 15 yards on that play. And Detroit just sort of hanging around, aren't they? I mean, it's 17 yeah, nothing, are. and you know they, they've kind of gone to sleep. And Detroit's just sort of—they're still trying to put something together here. And here comes the blitz. Denver just trips and falls. I think Alfonso Boone's going to get a free sack out of that one. Yeah, the pocket kind of collapsed. And Denver was underneath the avalanche. There's a man, Alfonso Boone, that you're talking about. It hey, just got the back of Eric Beverly's foot, the center. About three or four guys. There's so many of, in this offense, so many of the drops are short drops. Three steps sometimes, and Beverly was getting backed up into it. Lost seven yards on the play. So it's second and 17. Chicago does not want to have Detroit score. They are coming after him every play right now. Another blitz. Another blitz. <laughs> Detmer lost the football when he was sacked there. It looks like he recovered, however. But back-to-back -back sacks, sacks by this Bear defense, four on the day. All I can say is, you know, Ty hasn't played a couple of months now. And sometimes you like to get hit just to get that feeling is like. <laughs> but you don't you don't want this. This is, he, it just caved in on him. Colvin started with, with heat off the edge. Alfonso and again, Alfonso Boone, Boone a young player who's gotten more and more playing time here the last few weeks, who's got tremendous strength has really come on for Chicago. Well, there's another guy with a homecoming, sort of, from upstate in Saginaw, Michigan. Third and 25. They need to get it to the 22 to keep the drive going. That's Corey Schlesinger out of the backfield, not even close. Quickly out to Los Angeles, and J.B. with the game break. Hey, Craig, we know it's a huge game coming up between the Giants and the Eagles. Check this out. Giants letting the Eagles know they're on the wrong end of the field and told them and showed them in no uncertain terms, get down to your end of the field. This is expected to be a very physical contest, a surefire indication right there. Back to Kurt and Brian. Mike Strahan said this is the biggest game that he's ever played in. Well, he going played down the Super Bowl last year. Yeah, but this one is a war. This is Philadelphia. It's not the Ravens. This is a, a, a game that you get two times a year against that team. Ryan's going for it on fourth and 16. David Sloan bobbling it, and it's intercepted. Warwick Holdman with the pick. They haven't blown he was down. Nah, they not down. He lateral does count to Walt Harris, but there's a penalty marker on the play as well. He said when you chase two rabbits, they both get away. Meaning just concentrate on the, the task at hand, one game at a time. Anthony Thomas fighting to get back to the line of scrimmage. Look at this one up here now. Green Bay, you know, fighting for their lives up there, trying to stay on pace here with the Chicago Bears. If they lose today and the Bears win, the Bears are going to win the NFC Central. And if the Bears win today, they will have swept every team in the NFC Central, with exception of Green Bay, who yep. swept them, which is why the uh, Packers own the tiebreaker between the two teams. They came into today a game ahead of the Packers in the division. And as far as home field throughout the playoffs, tied with the 49ers in a game behind the Rams for home field throughout the NFC playoffs. A lot of 
bodies out front. Hardy Booker gets the first down and gets into the Bear record book. That catch ties Johnny Morris for most receptions in a single season by a Chicago Bear receiver at 93. I don't think that smile's been off Marty Booker's face all day. Well, why not? Well, he, he got involved in the first series. Catch some passes, and here it is, a thousand yard. I mean, it's not bad for a kid out of Northwest Louisiana. Remember, he was talking to us before the game. How many different directional schools there are in Louisiana? He couldn't even keep. He couldn't come up with them. A well, Booker over well, 100 on. yards today, as is Dwayne Bates. Two bear receivers going over the century mark. Well, Marty Booker was telling us that he was a high school quarterback, and he went to college. They tried to make him a defensive back. Anthony Thomas and Thomas gets over the 1,000 yard rushing mark. 13 yards on that carry. And we mentioned the fact that he missed two games this year, so he's getting over 1,000 yards in this, his 13th game of the year. And not a lot of uh, Chicago Bears in their long history has been able to go for over 1,000 as a rookie. Quite impressive when you look at the list. He's got 57 yards rushing today, 1,004 for the season. First down, Chicago at the 40. And he's been strong in the fourth quarters this year. Most good backs are there. Well, they give him the chance again, and there he goes. Well, Kurt, you think about Chicago Bears history and some of the great runners, and Gale Sayers and Walter Payton, certainly. You think, oh, they must have had 1,000 yards as a rookie. The fact is, neither one of them are on that list. You would be wrong, old Yak Brett. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Rashawn Salam, the, the latest one. Of course, you know, you can get pulled into thinking that it's going to be a long career. Of course, Ron, Rashawn Salam had, yeah. had knee surgery and you know, had, had health problems soon after that rookie season. But one thing they've got now that they didn't necessarily have then, they use Leon Johnson as a short yardage back. Yeah. James Allen, who was a thousand yard guy last season, to kind of spell the rookie and not make him carry the load by himself. Second and six, the pitch to Thomas. Lowers his head, picks up two more yards on the play. And it looks like Chicago's just going to be content here to kind of control this game, the rest of the game on the ground, run Anthony Thomas, get him some carries, get that offensive line, you know, just sort of doing their thing, which is mashing bodies. You see him pulling him. John Schubert, that pen's gone now. He lost the pen out of his ear. Well, what happened up here? Well, they've got the lead now, and, you know, they're running things down the easy? clock. No, no, John Shoup's not taking these. If John Shoup had a detailed car wash, all right, you would have the cleanest. What is that the play? What is that? Oh, hook him. The fish hook him. No, that's a hook. Set the hook. Let's see if they got him on the line on third and three. First down, Marty Booker with the grab. <laughs> Looking at that. The, that was the fish hook. That Set was the, the play. Hook. They ran it. Yeah. No, I, I, I was just thinking, you know, John Shoup had a detailed car center, and you took your Ford Mustang to get it clean, it'd be the cleanest car on the lot. The manifolds would be clean, because this guy is the most meticulous coach that I've been around, designing offense, and then staying with it. And he's not going to, believe me, he'll, he'll continue not to blame. You know, and he's just wired up now, getting the plays in. We should put a clock. There we go. Yeah. Two in a row. How about that? First and ten from the 47. See, I worked in Ford Mustang here in, in Detroit. Motown, Detroit. Sure. Ford's on the line. Yeah. Nice job by you. That was my first car. Well, Ford you mentioned Mustang. that Motorola thing earlier, too. Yeah. You know, the commercial you did. Yeah. I think you're working on another career. Yeah. Pitchman. Well, you mentioned this fourth quarter, and this is when they like to let that offensive line do their thing. They like to let Anthony Thomas carry the ball, and we've certainly seen that here so far. So you, just over seven and a half minutes to go. Chris Valario up there looking at the screens, looking at the clock melt away here. They don't know is what's going on up in Green Bay right now. Somebody knows, trust me. Second and five. Thomas again, this time stopped in the backfield by a former Green Bay Packer, Brian Williams. Brian Williams is getting a little chance to showcase his talents here. Look at the offensive line now. Giving up one sack. They're not, they'll take the smile off all their faces there because they've given up a sack today. They've, in seven games this year, they've gone without giving up a sack. They went last week without giving up one. But it's a good group. They get together every Thursday. That man, Big Cat Williams here, he's sort of the guy that uh, 
you know, that leads them out there on Thursday night. Take a look at that scoreboard. Minnesota's taking the lead over Green Bay with 10 minutes to play. So the Bears could be playing for the NFC Central Division title. Quick pass. Fred Baxter can't pull it in. Seven. That's 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific only on Fox. Detmer from his end zone. Out to Corey Schlesinger going nowhere. Mike Green wraps him up right at the line of scrimmage. I'll be at that Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Kurt. Arkansas and Oklahoma. Oklahoma. going to stay warm this year? I don't know. It's always cold at the Cotton <laughs> Bowl in Dallas. It's crazy down there. It is. But, I, you know, Oklahoma, they were they started off the season 7-0. It looked like they were going to play for another national championship before they lost in Nebraska. Detmer. Out of the end zone again. Completes another pass. David Sloan good enough for the first down. 12 yards on the play. Lions working with the no huddle once again. Detmer. Corey Schlesinger wrapped up by Brian Erlacher. It's a machine, isn't it? It really is. And he's always talking. And he's always barking out signals, letting everybody know. That's what the leader does. And that's what the middle linebacker is. He's got to be the guy that delegates. Erlacher with six tackles on the afternoon. But he's been all over the place. Looks like David Sloan has two right in the middle of the field. Sloan with the grab. That's his sixth catch of the day. Why it's six catches, isn't it? That one to pick up 15 yards. Looking down at right tackle, Stocker McDougal, the number one draft pick two years ago. They gotta, they gotta make him a player, and that's gonna be his position, right tackle. Protect to the backside right now. That wow. one for Johnny Morton, what a catch. R.W. McCordish was draped over him, yeah. but Detmer put it in the right spot, and Morton Boy. made the excellent grab. Well, what concentration on Johnny outside. Both hands on this football now, working on R.W. Another post corner route. Whew. He's going to make a number of catches this year. They've got to be on the highlight reel. 18 yards on that reception. First down in Bear territory. Well, that one won't make the highlight reel. Detmer's slow to get up. Mike Brown bringing the pressure, and there you see Detmer. And keep in mind, Mike McMahon, normally the starter, in street clothes today with that sprained foot. And so right now, Scott Dreisbach, who was just signed off the Bills practice squad four weeks ago, they're only back up. You see Mike Brown. Mike Brown's the one that put Charlie Batch out. He just got the hit on Ty Detmer. Ty doesn't look real happy getting up. Well, he has been battered. I'm sure Bruce is all over the place, too. That's a season worth of pressure. Here comes Mike Brown again. Going to get another shot on him. That pass caught by Desmond Howard. 46th pass of the day by Detmer. Nine yards. Oh, Ty put a little oil on that shoulder joint of his. Keep that thing loose. Nice catch by Desmond Howard. Seen some good performances from two good veterans here. Both Morton and Desmond Howard today. Detmer, pass number 47, David Sloan can't in there. Lions going for it on fourth and one. Detmer, incomplete. Lamont Warren, the intended receiver, but there was Mike Green. You saw him before the game. Good addition to this team. Well, a big touchdown pass against Tampa a couple of weeks ago. There's Anthony Thomas, and the A train rolls on. We roll it out to Los Angeles for an update on that Green Bay, Minnesota game. Hey, Kurt, back and forth affair taking place here. Take a look at Amon Green stepping his way nicely. Four yards to pay dirt. It is now 17-13 Green Bay. Time permitting, we will take you to that contest. Back to Kurt and Brian. All right, JB, and we can't say it enough. Green Bay has to win that game yep. to keep Chicago from winning the NFC Central today. And even if they win, if the Bears win next week, they will clinch the NFC Central. Yeah, and the Bears don't have to look behind them. They just have to take care of business. And they'll be the winners of that division. The pitch to Thomas. And the A-train just getting back to the line of scrimmage. Third and five. 
Thomas again. Going to be about two yards shy, maybe one yard. Lions with the first down at the 10-yard line. Like to get some points on the board before this one is over. Detmer under pressure. Right over the middle of the field, incomplete, intended for Larry Foster, but broken up nicely by Jerry Azuma. <laughs> kind of expected Chicago to come after him. Detmer with a career high 48 pass attempts. Seems like half of them have been from his back. He scrambles out this time. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, Phil Daniels was going for the club to try and knock that ball out. And I think he got hit square in the back. Well, that's the question. And the reality is, I think you probably agree with me, Marshall Falk is probably the best player in the league. Boy, Detmer hit as he throws, and that's picked off an easy touchdown for Walt Harris. Yeah, it, it's time for safety's sake to get Ty Detmer out of this football game and stop throwing the football like this. 39 yards on the interception return for Harris, the third touchdown of his career. Yeah, this is just safety issues now. I mean, Rosie Colvin has been hitting him since about the second play of the game, and that's what happened. Harris, the benefactor, and the Bears have been scoring touchdowns on defense a lot this season. That was, oh, that was just a rough pass for Detmer. From the 40-yard line. Pump fake. Corey Schlesinger. Chased down by Brian Erlacher after a pickup of 11. That gets us to the two-minute war. Uh, they haven't done it since 1988. Yeah, that was the last time they swept the Lions, 1988. Corey Schlesinger coming out of the backfield. Races out of bounds to stop the clock. But we mentioned, I mean, this is a domination of this division. Yep. With this win, they will have swept every team in the Central with the exception of the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, you know, and I was talking to Greg Blash about that, those Detroit losses, and they just didn't play well. I think they'll learn from it. And if they end up playing each other, however that might happen in the playoffs, I think that they'll be better equipped. I think they'll learn from those two losses. And that's what you got to do from any loss. Anytime they've lost this year, whether it was to Baltimore or to Green Bay and either one of the two times, they've come back the following week and rebounded. Second and nine. Here Ooh. comes the blitz. And boy, you mentioned they should get Detmer out of there. Yeah. Jerry Azuma coming in along with Roosevelt Colvin. Sack number five on the day by this Bear defense. Let me tell you something. In this league, you get paid a lot on sacks. You get a chance to go get yourself one. You add them up. Because at the end of the year, when you look at what you have, you don't remember how you got him or what game they came in or when the game was. Well, look at Detmer ducking. I mean, it's a good thing he did, but, you know, he's rightfully so. He's a little gun shy right now. It's credit, really, an entire team. How the young guys have come on. They believe in a system. Sack number six. Football out, and the Bears recover. Well, the ball's still out. Bobby Howard did get the recovery. They say he was down. The shutout against the Detroit Lions, creating turnovers along the way. Five turnovers created by this Bear defense as they hold on to win it, including scoring a touchdown, 24-0 the final. So the Bears go to 12-3 on the year. The Lions fall to 1-14 after the 24-0 shutout here at the Pontiac Silverdome. Brian Erlacher and that Bear defense strong all day. Six sacks, five turnovers, and a touchdown scored by the Bear D.